What a surprise, we're back in the garage today. We're gonna be replacing my clutch master cylinder. Uh, a couple videos ago, I replaced my clutch slave cylinder, and you're, apparently you're supposed to replace both of them at the same time, because usually if one goes, the other will go pretty soon after. So that's what I'm going to attempt today. Uh, I've never done something like this, but I kind of have an idea of how to get it done, and uh, I'm gonna take you along with me. So we're gonna start removing some parts uh, so we can get down to the master cylinder and see if we can get this old one out and the new one in. Uh, hopefully it's not too big of an issue. I'm using the Duralast clutch master cylinder. If any of you are interested, there it is. Nice and fresh, nice and fresh. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we gotta get this intercooler off. And if you're not sure how to do that, you can either look it up or uh, check back to my slave cylinder install a couple videos ago. Put a little link in the video right now. So uh, check that out, that'll uh, show you how to get the intercooler off. Okay, we just removed the intercooler and that actually exposes the, God And now we can see our clutch master cylinder right here. And if you look closely, right at the bottom, you can kind of see some condensation or some type of oil seeping out the bottom, which tells me that it's allowing air into the system. But it's definitely wet. There's definitely some type of fluid coming out the bottom. So at some point, there's a bad seal there. So definitely need to replace this. And just to be safe, I'm gonna spray the little nuts here just in case they're pretty corroded on. I doubt this has ever been replaced. The other one might be hard to get to, but I was aiming it. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Let that soak in a bit, and then uh, I'm gonna go detach the clutch pedal from the inside of the cabin. Alrighty, here we go. We're going into the car, under where the pedals are, and we're gonna pull the pin that's holding the linkage to the master cylinder. Where's it at, where's it at? All right, here we are, under the car again, blah, blah, blah. Here's your clutch. You can see it links all the way over to, you can see it right there. So hopefully, we just gotta pull that pin out and that'll release it from the master cylinder. Hopefully you guys can see something. I'm using my Hawkeye pliers here. Can't get a good angle on it. The angle of the dangle. It's gonna pull this bad boy. Bad girl, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, super awkward angle. And there was this little plastic piece on the very edge of the pin. I just pulled that right off with some pliers. And there we go, there's the pin. Now our master cylinder is free and ready to go. Jesus. Whew, it's a tight space, too fat for this. So there you have it right there, pin that holds your master cylinder in. There was this pin next in the hole, and then this is like an emergency measure, a little plastic piece that goes on top. Be sure to keep this in a safe place. We'll be needing it, it'll be very important. Whew, getting this done, hang in there. I'm gonna go on ahead and use my trusty little vacuum mechanism here and suck all the old uh, brake fluid out of the reservoir. No. Well, that was an epic fail. I don't know what happened. My damn f pump just broke. God. Cheap AutoZone stupid handle just broke off of this thing. Can you believe that? I see the little pin. Maybe I can get this thing back in working order. Well, that's gonna suck when it comes to bleeding the system. I'll get this figured out. We'll get through it. All right, crisis averted. It happened to be just a little pin that goes right in the back there. I just pop that back in. We're good to go now. So there's only one hard line that goes into the master cylinder, which is gonna be right here. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter wrench, and I just broke it free, came came apart pretty easy. Didn't even spray it with anything. Just keep in mind that it will leak out. There will be some fluid remaining in the reservoir or throughout the whole cylinder, so get some towels ready. So now we're gonna break free these bolts that actually mount the whole cylinder, and it's gonna be 12 millimeter, so let's go ahead and break these loose. Move on to this other side. It's a little bit more tricky to get to. All right, this is how I got to the second bolt. I just had an extender on there. Just winded it under the hard line there and it lines up pretty even. Break this free, baby. Yeah, that's what we like, nice and easy. Just gonna unscrew the nuts there. Get them off the studs very carefully. This one might be a little tough. I got fat chode fingers. Really tight spaces here. All right, almost dropped it. We're wiggling, I'm uh, just gonna get that hard line off, and uh, yeah, baby. All right, so I got the new master cylinder right here. They're a last product, so hopefully, you know, in the word it says last, so you're hoping that it'll last. But it's a lifetime warranty, actually. But I'm gonna attempt to bench bleed this right here, right now. Alrighty then, here goes nothing. Just gonna add a little bit. What should I add? Uh, I guess just enough where it's not gonna be sucking air. 
So I'm just gonna slowly feed fluid. Your bubbles come up. I'm gonna hold this plug really tight because that'll come shooting off if you don't. Slowly release the shaft. Got a little bit of squirtage out the left side, but that's all part of the fun. Quite a bit has actually been sucked in there already. All right, I think I loaded enough in there. Cause it's coming, it's shooting out on the other side now. So at least there's something in the system. That way when I bleed it, it won't take like seven hours. So it has been primed. Pretty sure it's been bled. All right, bench bleeding is done. Let's go on ahead and install this thing. All right, I'm gonna undo that hard line all the way now. Get that loose. We got free. There she is. All right, I just wanted to do some comparisons here. Old versus the new. It's pretty identical. It's not an OEM Subaru part. It's just from AutoZone. I'll have the part number in the description. So you can see my old one is completely wore out. You can just tell that it's, it's seen better days. Definitely seen better days. And this is where it was leaking out the bottom. So this thing was way done, way past its life. So I'm glad I'm gonna replace it today with this nice, clean, brand new thing. So hopefully I'll have better luck with this. I also wanted to check out the linkages and see where it was set. Compare the old one to the new one. Make sure it's somewhat of a somewhat in line of where my old one was. So the engagement point and like the pedal feel is somewhat similar. So I'm just gonna line those up, make sure the threads are even with the old one. That way there aren't any complications. You're coming with me. You just found your new home. Out with the old and in with the new. I'm gonna feed this right back on. Da -da. All right, I'm just gonna thread this nut onto the left left stud there. Lock so. All right, I guess before I start leaking brake fluid all over the garage floor, I'm gonna attempt to put this in there. How in the? F there it goes. Okay, so here we go. Real quick with it. Um, push it in. Screw it on. Just minimal leakage. Always be sure to have a towel because brake fluid's nothing to mess with. All right, we're just gonna tighten up this uh, hard line here. 10 millimeter. No, 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 don't be doing that. Keep tightening this on, then move on to the mounting bolts. All right, I just got done snugging down the hard line. The bolts snug down as well. If you wanna, you can look up the torque specs, but I am not going to do that. So everything's mounted up nicely. And then we're gonna go into the cab now and uh, connect the linkages back up to the actual clutch pedal. And then we're gonna bleed the system. We're back in the car under where the pedals are. And now I'm gonna need to replace, or I need to put back in place the pin that we took out. That goes right up in there. Hope y'all can see that. Just kind of point and shoot with this GoPro. It's kind of a struggle. Get one step closer to getting this thing done. I'm putting the pin through right now. Line it up with the holes. And wiggle, wiggle, shake, shake. I have to do this off camera. This is bullshit. I just pushed the pin through. Now it's locked in. Now all I have to do is line up the hole and then place the little snap pin in there to keep it from wiggling out. So this is me putting the pin in the hole. The microphone did not work. So now I'm here stuck doing a voiceover. Once you get the pin in place, you're ready to move on to the final steps. This is easy. This is so easy. This is basic shit right here. Okay, the pin's in. Let's see how it functions here. Master cylinder moving up and down. And obviously I'm gonna have to re bleed the system because this is what I'm working with now. Look, absolutely no pressure. All right, time to bleed the system. So I'm gonna go into the cab and pump the clutch pedal with my hand, probably maybe 10 times. I like to go slow and bring it up. Slow, that way it's not creating too many air bubbles in there. I think that's five. And on the 10th one, I'm gonna leave it down. Run over to the bleeder valve screw, break it free. Close it. We're gonna go pump the pedal again. All right, well, once your clutch gets to the certain firmness that you prefer, then you are done bleeding the system, and it's time to put everything back together and then go for a test drive and see if we did everything right. It's always uh, a mystery to me. You never know. And you know how it goes working on cars. It never goes the way you plan it to go. 